Hey everybody, it's Tobin here from SnapToCover.com. Wanted to bring you a review of this awesome game called Elite Dangerous. It's currently in development and it's a rent new rendition from the same developer that created the original Elite back in 1984. It was the first game of its kind, letting you fly through outer space uh, in this black and white sci-fi styled game. Uh, you can trade goods, they had a huge space station and space and everything it was it was amazing so they've gone ahead and they've recreated it for the 21st century really enhanced graphics the game boasts 400 billion star systems not million not thousand but billion star systems if you were to try and take each star system and put it on a pixel of a monitor that was 1080p you would actually need 193,000 monitors to be able to see all of them at once. And that doesn't even take into account all of the planets and star systems, and, or the uh, star ports, and the uh, spaceships that are flying around in these different systems. So the world is huge, huge, huge universe. Uh, it was kickstarted, so there's no real, uh, I guess it would be a publisher that's pushing the game out. It's just the company that makes it and the people that want to play it that are funding it. These guys have boasted the entire time that they're making this as a game that they can play for themselves. Um, one thing that's sweet, as the time goes on, they're going to have expansions that will actually let you go down onto the planet's surfaces. Um, and they're going to be completely procedurally generated worlds on these planets with uh, cities that you can visit and maybe find people to pick up missions and walk around, see the other spaceships coming in, uh, maybe just go sightseeing. There's no real uh, quest line in the game. It's just you trying to make a living in this vast universe and kind of just immersing yourself and living in it. They've got... Um, you can go be a pirate if you want to, if you want to go out and find another ship, shoot it down, steal its cargo, and try to sell it at the next space station, you can do that. If you want to fight for one of the various factions that are out in space, there's the Federation, there's the Empire, uh, then there's the independent groups, uh, rebel forces. You can go out and you can join in on these giant space battles that go on. Um, or you can just be a trader. You can go from space station to space station and grab goods and try to buy them low, sell them high. Um, so there's a ton of different ways to play the game. They have enabled it for a HOTAS setup. So I went out and I actually bought a HOTAS rig. So this is a, a hands-on stick and hands-on stick and throttle, um, or hands-on throttle and stick. Sorry, I got that mixed up. Uh, so what that basically means is I get a joystick to be able to turn my ship around. It's got a bunch of buttons, triggers, and then I also have my throttle over here. So this allows me to uh, increase and decrease speed, which has another bunch of buttons for triggering different things like hyperspace, which looks amazing. We'll be getting into that. Um, and it also has head tracking. Now, I've been looking into head tracking for a while now, ever since I got into the Armor 3 series. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of doing head tracking. There's the Oculus Rift, which is 300 bucks right now for a dev kit, and it's not even the full release copy. So personally, I'm not a developer. I'm not going to shell out the money when I know I'm going to want to go out and buy the actual Oculus Rift when it comes out for uh, consumer use. They've also got uh, Track IR, which is kind of the standard head tracking software out there. So I looked at that. That one's... 200 bucks and I was like that's still a lot of money I only play Arma 3 and Elite Dangerous with this and that's a lot of money to shell out for something I'm going to use for two games that I play so I went online and I did a little research and I found out what does it take to actually make head tracking is there a way to do it on the cheap and I found out there is there are tons of do-it-yourself tutorials out there um, I might actually go ahead and put together a tutorial if anyone else is interested in that but basically all you need is a PlayStation 3i webcam. I went to GameStop, picked it up for $8 because PlayStation 4 is out, so everyone's dumping their old one. So I got a used PlayStation 3i, and this picks up infrared light. And then this part right here actually isn't the um, uh, microphone. This is actually the, uh, the light source. And the three lights, which are here, here, and here, give off infrared light, this picks up the dots and then translates that into the game using a program on my computer called OpenTrack. 
So it basically mimics what Track IR does and fools the game into thinking that I'm actually using Track IR. Uh, making this probably took about an hour and it was really, really simple. You solder a couple, a couple LEDs together. It's actually made out of a wire coat hanger. Um, and then I, you can do it off a battery pack, which is what I saw in the tutorial, but I decided I would actually build it out of a, a USB cable because I hate running around trying to find batteries. And the worst thing that could ha happen is I'd be in a space combat in this game and then my head tracking would go away and my guy would be stuck looking to the left or something. And I'd have to be run around and go find batteries. And by that time, I'm probably dead. So... I decided to go with the USB, decided to build my own head tracker, decided to get the HOTAS, and decided to give you guys a review of this game. So we're going to actually check out this first tutorial, which is the pilot's uh, docking procedures. So we're going to go into this real quick. That's the ship. That's the Sidewinder. It's the first ship that you get when you uh, start playing the game. Um, all right, so let's recalibrate my head. And good. So now you can see I can tilt my head up, I can tilt my head down, I can look at my uh, cool cockpit, all the different buttons, I got this sweet HUD, and it gets better. So now if I look to my left, I get a cool menu that kind of flickers into my view, and on this is everything about the world going on around me. So um, I've got missions, so these are different tasks that you can pick up on the bulletin board and the starport services. So, and it also shows what kind of fines you have in the sector. Um, so, if you steal something or kill a civilian or do something bad, you'll have to end up paying fines. And if you don't pay the fines, then they actually will try to shoot you down. If you come into a sector, you'll actually become wanted. Um, they've got contacts. So, these are all the different ships and space stations that are around me gives me some information about what faction they're for, if they have a bounty on them. So someone might have a 50,000 credit bounty on them, and if you kill him, you actually get that bounty. So that's sweet. Uh, down here we have the galaxy map, which I'm not going to be able to see in this demo, but I'll show it to you in another one. And system map. So this galaxy map shows you the entire galaxy, and the system map shows you all the planets, the suns, and moons and star ports in that system so you can figure out where you want to travel figure out what they actually take in for goods um, and if I look to my right I get all the information about my actual ship so I have the status of my ship including how much money I make what my rank is uh, how many kills I've done what my local bounty is in this system and it can change from system to system uh, modules, so these are all the cool upgrades I have on my ship. The fire groups, so these are the different weapons and utilities that I have on it. Uh, cargo, so if I'm transporting anything to trade, this is where it's found. And then these are different cool options, or different pieces of my ship. So I can say ship lights, I can turn those on. And then you can see the lights on the front part are on. I come back over here and click again and they turn off. So without further ado, let's go to return to surface and we'll show you how big this starport actually is. This cool loading procedure, you actually feel like you're in a lift. So there's the entrance slash exit, one in one out. And all those little squares up there are different ports to land on. And when you come into the station, you'll actually be assigned one, depending upon the size of your ship and uh, what's available. If it's a really busy station, you're going to see tons of ships. And when you play online, you're actually going to see you know thousands of players coming in and out of these sh these space stations. So that's that's sweet. Uh, so let's now go to launch, and we get our pre-flight checklist. So, weapon deploy test is done. Uh, let's do pitch up, pitch down, pitch left, pitch right, yaw right, yaw left, thrust right, which is here, thrust left, thrust up, and thrust down. Okay, that part's done. 
Now we can throttle up. And throttle down. I don't know if this guy's actually... Yeah, so you can see it actually, it's a one-to-one. -one. When my hand moves, as I pull it back, I'll do it slowly so you guys can see. But the guy in the game actually pulls it at the same speed and distance that I do. Uh, landing gear test. Check. Target ahead. Primary fire. And UI focus, which is down here on my pinky. So we are ready to go. We have been unlocked from the port. And then we can fly up. If you look down here, you see that leave station, I have a timer. So that's how much time I have to leave the station. So I'm going to thrust up a little bit. And you don't want to speed because the space station will shoot you down if you uh, start causing a commotion. Or they'll fine you. <laughs> you hear them warning us already. Yeah, they're pretty brutal. They don't, they don't mess around. There's a few million people out in the star system, so they got time to play games. What we're gonna do is put our landing gear up, and then we're actually gonna give the engines all the power so we can fly, fly away. And then let's let's tilt the ship a little bit. And I'll tilt my head, and you can see this planet now that's not earth but it's a uh, it's definitely a livable planet and every system has different planets and they look different and they act different um, and eventually when the when the uh, update comes out you'll actually be able to go down to that planet fly land walk around cities uh, maybe pick up people and take them hunting for wild game on the planets there talked about that so it is it is really cool. So we're gonna back down the throttle a little bit. And then we're going to turn, and you can see my guy is actually turning the joystick the same amount I am. And then we're going to line back up and show you how big the space station we were in is. So it's pretty massive. Again, this this is all space. I mean, we could fly over to that planet, that moon over there. We could fly over to that planet over there. Um, and it would take a while. They actually have a couple different modes to let you... Uh, I'm just kind of stopped here for now. But they actually have modes that let you go through what they call cruising speed, which lets you zip around in a star system. And then they have warp speed that lets you travel between star systems in just a couple minutes. So let's go... So in order to get back in, you can't just rush in. They actually have to clear you for landing. So what you're going to do is go over here, and we're going to go over to Contacts and click on Training Station, and then come to Request Docking. Request Granted. So Request Granted, and it says Proceed to Landing Pad 42, and we have 10 minutes to do so. As we approach, you'll see there's tons of billboards advertising different companies. Sometimes this can actually be hard to find if you're coming in from a system because you'll uh, you got to find the right side of this monstrous starport. If you come in on the other side, you might have to fly around the entire thing. I'll slow it down a little bit. Make sure that I get in. have to spin the ship, Welcome bring it over, let's put our landing pads down, and then we're going to fly right on in. And when I get close enough, my HUD right here in the middle of the screen will switch and basically line me up, or help me line up, for a nice smooth landing. There it goes. Nice smooth landing. Okay. Level it out. Bring it down. Docking successful. And we landed. Engines disengaged. 
So a lot of the game is that. That's that's one of the bigger things in the game. Uh, let's go back to tutorials. And we'll go to basic combat so you guys can see what that's like. We'll get a little little dog fight. I'd say dog fighting in the game is actually a lot easier. Ooh, we're in a uh, a lot easier with the with the Hotas than it is normally. All right, so that's the guy I have to try and attack. So I can scan his ship and find out about him. So this is Solar Fluke. And what we can do is deploy our hard points. And we're gonna follow him and then engage. Oh no, I flew over. Short checked me. That's not good. I'm gonna fly. Alright, there he is. Oh, get some. Get some. Do it. On you like butter. Oh, yeah, that's got him. Woo! All right, so that's uh that's basic combat. It's pretty good. Go back to tutorials and let's go to travel. So this is a nice one. Um, it's going to start off kind of like the first one, uh, but this will show you what some of those new. Uh... So let's go to launch. Again, we got to go through our checklist. You could turn this off, but can't do that right now. Pull back, left, right. Let's do these real quick. Uh, we got that, we got that, we got that. Throttle up, throttle down, landing gear test, and we're ready to rock. So I think it does hyperspeed and warp travel all at the same time. And they did an excellent job, I have to say. The warp travel in this game looks just like you would almost picture it. If you've seen any sci-fi movie, and it's it's incredible. All right, so we should be ready to launch here in a second, and then we'll fly on out of here. Okay, so we're released. We're gonna just bolt out of here. Drive it like you stole it. So we made it out of there. Let's take the landing gear off. Get engines at full speed. Now we gotta do. So what we're gonna do actually before I blast off into hyperspace, let's look at the galaxy map. So it's in beta right now, so I think they have 40 galaxies, but they're eventually gonna have four million. Um I had to use the mouse for this. But you can see this bubble here. So these are... So this is Polaris. So you can see it would go up and down. It's crazy. And then we go... So this only oh, this only has training and destination. That's why this is the tutorial. But usually there's a ton of different star systems you can go to. This one's basically saying that I can only go to this one. Um, but yeah, 400 billion of these little points that you can travel to. If we go to navigation and view, 
Um, you can find different things out about the system. Let's go to system view. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, system view. So this this star system has a gigantic orange sun. Uh, it's got destination planet and destination station. Again, this is just a tutorial. Some of them have multiple um, planets on different rings that rotate around the sun with space stations at different ones. Um, over here we can see that the Allegiance is Federation, so if we're pirates and we're wanted by the Federation, then we might want to try and avoid it, or if we have to go through it to get to where we want to go, uh, we're going to have to watch out for uh, Federation ships. Might try and shoot us down, or other players that can see that we're wanted and try to kill us to collect the bounty. Also down here when uh, when you're in the actual game, it'll tell you what they import and export out of their space station, so if you uh, have it on you, you can find out if they actually import it, and it might be a better place to try and sell your goods at. Cool. So we've clicked on this. This kind of sets it as our destination. Um, so if we go over here, we can do destination, and we can do engage hyper engine. Destination object obscured. Okay, so destination is obscured. We're not going to be able to go to that, so let's just go into hyperdrive, and we'll kick that off now. Oh, guess we can't do that. Lock and super cruise. Let's do lock destination. I'm going to do this the cool way. So you trigger that you want to go into super cruise. It charges up. Ready to engage. Then we throttle up. You see us get pulled in. All this. Three, two, one, engage. We start going at ridiculous speed. So we're now in su Super Cruise, and the place we need to go is actually on the other side of this planet. So this is how you quickly get around uh, planets. That bright star in the sky over there is actually our destination. Um, so now we're clear. We should be able to open up this menu, go down to destination, um, and lock and engage Drive hyperdrive. Charging. Spin it over here. Line up. This will slowly charge up using a bunch of our fuel. And instead of it taking greater than a year of our lives, it actually would take 3.16 years of playing this game to fly there. I don't think we want to do that. So instead we get to go into this awesome cinematic, which we're fully engaged in. It's not a loading screen, it's just us actually flying there through hyperspace. And it dumps us out right in front of the sun. So you gotta maneuver around in Super Cruise to get away from the planet, otherwise we'll be sucked in and our hull will start to uh, to burn up, which is something we do not want to do. So that's the destination planet. What we're looking for is the... Where are you? we're looking for is a space station. So one thing we can do is we can go over here and we can go to destination station and we can lock it and that'll tell us right where it is. Okay, so we're lined up. So we can turn this over and you can actually turn off the assist and that'll actually lock us in place. So now you just kind of look and see that we're back down that speed. We're coming a little too hot and we'll see what happens when you go at something too fast in Super Cruise. You end up flying right by it. Right by it. So we'll be spinning around. You go really fast in Super Cruise. So we're going to back it down and try and actually hit it this time. So they're just flying by it. So we're one light year away. 
little almost under yeah, one and a half light years. So be there in about ten seconds. And in multiplayer, you're going to see other ships, um, both NPC ships, so computer-driven characters, kind of like that light right there, coming to the station, and you'll also see other players. You can also be sucked out of super crews by ships. Um, sometimes it's federal ships looking to see if you're carrying anything illegal, or it'll be other players that are looking to pirate you or see if you're illegal so that they can collect a bounty. So we got we got three three people coming in. And you'll also be able to mine stuff off the planet surfaces. That's another thing they said that they were gonna allow people to do. Alright, safe engage distance ready. So we can click that and pop ourselves out of super cruise into normal mode. And we arrive on the back side of the station. So let's figure out which way we need to go. Looks like the entrance is here on the side. So this entrance is right over here. So we're just gonna cruise along. You can see those billboards. speed a little bit. And then we still have to kind of just levitating myself down. Alright, let's request docking. Request granted. Request is granted, we get landing pad one. So let's fly on in here. And a lot of the times you're actually going to be scanned as you come into a, sh into a um, ship to see if you have things that they don't allow. Like some stations don't allow alcohol, some stations do. So you got to be wary about what station you go into. It can be really difficult if you're carrying something for a station that's going to be, you know, two or three jumps away and you need to stop for fuel. Because you might not intend to break the law, but you actually might break that station's law by visiting them. Alright, let's put this landing gear down, let's line it up, and move on in. For whatever reason, you actually do see people do that a lot. They land on the wrong station, or on the wrong pad, or just kind of stall themselves. Successful. And we docked. So that's how you fly from station to station, transport goods, um, starport services. So I just wanted to give you that. It's uh, it's really immersive. You actually feel like you're inside of a uh, a cockpit flying around fighting people. These things are great. This is the uh, the X-55 Rhino. If you're looking at it and you want it. Um, X-55 Rhino, it's great. I haven't had any problems with it so far. I've used it in Arma as well. Look, works great there, flying helicopters and planes. Um, this, this is what makes the game. Being able to look around in the station, um, read these panels as they pop up on the screen, interact with all of those, read all my panels. The fact that all of this, whether it's my head or it's the sticks, when I'm in the spaceship and they move exactly the same distance that mine do, uh, it's mind blowing. Completely sucks you in, takes you completely out of you have this room that you're seeing me in. I, when I'm playing this game, I feel like I'm inside that ship. So give it two thumbs up. There's a game similar to it that I'm also going to plug here, which is Star Citizen. Um, very, very similar concept. Uh, they are. They have done a Kickstarter. It's one of the most successful Kickstarters of all time. 
Um, I think they've raised a billion dollars or something like that. It's it's nuts. But what they do, instead of buying the game and then just playing it, um, and then maybe buying add-ons in the future, what they do is they actually say, if you want to buy a ship, you can buy a ship. And that's kind of like their Kickstarter levels. So you'll go into the game, you'll go into their website, you'll basically buy a ship and that'll give you access to the game and they range anywhere from 45 to I think $350 for that game. Um, 45 bucks is going to get you a ship similar to what I have here. Um, looks a little different. I have to say the one thing that I'm seeing in a difference is that I like the ships better in Star Citizen. I like the inside of the ship better in this game as far as the cockpit view when you're flying. Um, that game already has has two modes. It's not as polished as this. Um, they have a hangar mode that basically allows you to fly, walk around your ship, and then they have a, another mode uh, that's like a dogfighter where you basically go out and fly your ship and try to shoot down other people's ships. Um, but they don't have this full trade system in place yet, so this game's definitely a lot farther along. Um, I like it just the way it is. It'll be awesome when they actually implement a lot of the stuff that Star Citizen is hoping to do as well. Uh, so it'll be an interesting year next year when both these games come out to see which one kind of rises to the top. But Elite Dangerous, loving it. It's good to see the game come back. So, what do you think of Elite Dangerous? Would you pick it up? Would you play it? If you will. Uh, feel free to uh, shoot me your commander name and I'll add you and love to go flying. Uh, but always, until next time, always snap to cover.